entertainment corner. Do we? We're going to see the Van Gogh So yeah, so we've come down, we've um, been shopping in Ikea because that was really important. And over there, in that building, is the Van Gogh Live um, exhibition that we've come down to see and we're going to take you on an adventure with us. Um, but for now, we're going to find probably a coffee. The Royal Hall of Industries opened in 1913 as part of the Royal Easter Show Showgrounds. It was the home of the Showbag Pavilion. And Grace is going to be our household contact trace person. It was quite a strange sight walking into a supposedly sold out event to find it so empty of people and so sparse. But on the other hand, it was quite pleasant. We were able to wander around. How cool are these little houses? We're assuming they are like VIP um, coffee houses, but each of them are themed for a particular famous painting or time, we are guessing in Van Gogh's life. Starry Nights. This one reflects that his favourite colours to particularly in his south of France period. Then we've got the blossoms signifying the, the almond blossom painting done for his nephew and then again Starry Night. What are you expecting Grace? I don't know. <laughs> I'm excited to see Van Gogh though. I love his work so. The music behind sounds cool, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> We're just going to have a coffee and some macaroons and wait till our actual ticket time to get in to hear the show. We took the people leaving as our cue to get ready to walk back around the other side to enter into the area where they do the show. Learning about the paintings was brilliant. We'll get on to the almond trees soon. Vincent was 27 when he started his self-taught painting career and he started in the Netherlands after working for as an art dealer. From 1880 to 1885 he lived in the Netherlands and his paintings were quite dark as noted on that wall. What did you think when you saw them Grace? It was a bit of an eye opener because it was paintings of his I hadn't seen before. I can't say I've seen many, but I do look up to a lot of his floral designs and stuff. But to see his early work, it was quite different. Okay, so now we're moving into Paris, and the style is completely different, hey? Yeah, his use of colour changes super dramatically. Like, he's discovered it all over again. And it was during this time that he really, um, as many of the Impressionists did, embarked on that... Um, China, Japanese influence with the flatter paintings and things like that. Vincent was also a prolific letter writer to his brother and there's lots of quotes and stuff and lots of diary entries that we can see throughout um, time that helped to paint a picture of the man that he was and the struggles he had. There were some quite amazing paintings in Paris. You can definitely tell he was in an up period. I love these watercolory looking paintings of the fields and just farmland, it's so cool. Now this is probably a little bit out of sync, but the almond blossom was a painting that he painted for his nephew, who was also named Vincent and it was delivered in or finished in May 1890. He was also his godson. You love the irises, don't you, Grace? Well, I love florals. I can pretty much only paint florals, so it's definitely one of my favorite parts of his works in time period. He was actually quite diverse as a painter, I think. changed out the music in the recording because it doesn't I didn't want to breach copyright but the music was very fitting for the paintings and he 
Mr. Little Diddy. Well done. Now we're moving to the south of France where he lived out his last two years and the struggle with mental illness became very, very apparent. But as you can see by this quote, he was went down with a lot of hope for the future. I was very sad to read the sunflower, some of the sunflower reflections. Um, it was regarded as an ugly flower and he was regarded as an ugly man. Oh, oh, I love Oh. What did you think of the cafe painting? I really like it. Um, you start to see the influences for things like A Starry Night and the colours that he's experimenting with in that. And over this like two year period you see his style change almost in it, with each painting that he does. It gets more and more dramatic. Mm. And Even his portraits have changed, hey? Yeah, they're not as detailed as they were. I think it captures the colour of the, the sky in the south of France very well. The movement that they've added just adds so much life to the, the paintings. I loved the way they used the contours he'd already had in the paintings and just made them move throughout the picture. his room in Arles and he actually did three paintings and two sketches of this particular painting and went into great detail to describe it to his brother Theo in a letter and it was known to be one of his favourites of all time. And this was just a bit of a montage of his journals. This was their intro into the more erratic paintings that he did, so A Starry Night. Um, you start to see a lot more of that, that brush stroke that he's in, really famous for. Again, you probably noticed that even though this was a sold out session, there was still lots of room within the, the area to walk around and keep socially distanced. This part of the show actually made me quite sad because you can see his loss of hope happening with each picture that popped up. Oh, the only painting that actually sold in his lifetime was called The Red Vineyard and it was sold at a exhibition that he had. There may have been others but that's the only one we know of. The fact this painting here is his last, what they believe to be his last painting and in just looking at it you see there's no detail to it really. So what would you say was a highlight for you? I just love the way that the music actually went with the pieces that they were showing at the certain points and actually telling the story without you having to read the, 
the plaques or the bits of journal you could just sit and watch what was going on around you and you can't go to a thing like that without getting souvenirs so we picked up a few things 3D composition of his bedroom uh, which we've just been saying Vincent very much liked painting I love the towel on the wall his incident with Gagan and the cutting off of his earlobe where he did two chairs one with a pipe on its own representing him and feeling empty and alone and Kagan's had a bit more hope and life on the chair. With our visit to Van Gogh over, we headed out and before we did I thought I'd take you on a little bit of a walk. The Sydney Cricket Ground over there in the background. This is all part of the old what used to be showgrounds where each Easter the Sydney show was held but um, since the 2000 Olympics or after that it's now moved to Olympic Park. This area looks so good there was a gym, a cinema, a bowling alley, lots of bars, restaurants, cafes and places to just relax and a children's play area as well. I hope you enjoyed what you saw today. If you did, why not hit the like and subscribe button, hit the little bell so you'll be notified of our upcoming videos. And as always, thanks for joining us. Travel brilliantly. Bye. If you want to catch more, why not hit the suggested playlist or the video just for you.